And the indictment thrusts the former president, his campaign, and the legal system into uncharted waters. Let's bring in senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky at the courthouse in Manhattan, investigative reporter Catherine Falders in Washington, senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott in Palm Beach, and ABC News contributor Johns Hopkins history professor Leah wright Rigger for more on this. Uh, Leah, let's start with the historic nature of this. So former president has been indicted for the first time. How significant is that? You know, this is historic. It has never happened before. The closest that we have gotten to something like this comes from two really different time periods. One is Ulysses S. Grant, who was arrested and then quickly unarrested for speeding, I believe, with a horse uh, in the 1870s. And the other one, of course, is the one that everyone knows about, which is Richard Nixon. But of course, the subsequent president, uh, Gerald Ford, preemptively pardoned him for all Sorry, crimes committed in the past and all again? crimes committed in the future. So we've never actually gotten to this point. And, What's you know, I, I think it's worth highlighting that because we've never had anything like this, because for a long, very long time, the behavior of presidents, either during their presidencies, while on the campaign trail, or afterwards have been off, uh, uh, off guards or essentially, uh, you know, uh, against uh, prosecution, what we're seeing right now is a complete shift in the political landscape. It not only means that Trump can be indicted, it means that any living president can be indicted if there is just cause, right? If there's a material to bring such causes forward. That is a very, very different uh, world, political world than we are used to. And it's also going to be interesting to see how Trump's opponents within the Republican Party use this to their advantage, both to rally supporters within the Republican Party, but also to rally supporters for themselves, because now Trump is tainted goods. So let's bring that point to Rachel Scott. Rachel, how are lawmakers on both sides reacting to this? Well, let's start first with Republicans. We know that late last night when former President Donald Trump got the word of this indictment, he started to call Republicans on Capitol Hill to shore up support, to really rally his base up. And his message to them was really simple. Get on offense here and come and defend me. And that's exactly what we are seeing. We're seeing Republicans, Republican leadership especially, stand by the former president from House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who said that our justice system is now being uh, politicalized and weaponized uh, to the RNC chairwoman, who essentially just called this an egregious abuse of power at this point. Democrats, of course, have a, a, a definitely a different approach to this. They are uh, waiting and urging people to wait to see what this indictment actually says, because, of course, we have no idea what exactly the, the extent of these charges are going to be. But when it comes to Republicans, what is very notable here is how quickly even the ones that could possibly challenge the former president in 2024 are rallying to his defense, Diane. And, and Aaron, you have some new reporting about the Manhattan DA resisting House Republicans who are investigating the indictment. Uh, what can you tell us about that? The Manhattan DA's office is really hamstrung in what it can say about the criminal charges themselves because the indictment remains sealed. But what the office can do is try to resist these calls by the, the House Republicans uh, for an investigation into its methods and its financing and its motives uh, over the investigation of former President Trump. The, the, the Manhattan DA's office in its second letter to Congressman Jim Jordan and other House Republicans who are pushing this uh, calls the investigation an improper incursion into an independent and legitimate criminal investigation. And it also calls out House Republicans for, for doing former President Trump's bidding, saying that you know, this interest was never there uh, until Trump went on social media to decry the investigation and, and uh, predict his, his arrest. So the Manhattan DA's office is resisting cooperating, although they say that they will, if they need to, uh, uh, send in certain documents or, or meet with House Republicans uh, at the appropriate time. Now, Catherine, we don't know the exact charges in this indictment yet. When could we see that and what can we expect? Yeah, we don't. It's important to remember this is a grand jury. All of this is private. This indictment is still under seal. Trump's lawyers uh, were saying this morning that they don't 
even know what's in this. They have also uh, not seen this. So, look, we're told, obviously, that Trump will make an initial appearance early next week. Tuesday is the day that they're looking at. And then we will probably uh, see some of that indictment unsealed at that point. But until then, uh, we're not going to see anything in terms of uh, the charges, the counts, uh, what exactly is in that indictment, of course, until the former president makes an initial appearance. Aliyah, some Trump allies are saying this sets a dangerous precedent. Others say the indictment shows no one is above the law. What kind of a precedent does this case set? Well, it means that presidents are now fair game, that presidents, so before what we've seen are two things, essentially, which is that the argument that Trump made over and over again during his presidency, that presidents, while in office, are immune from political charges, from indictments, from arrests, from criminal activity, because they are presidents. So we're seeing that has now been shifted, certainly, that actions that have been done either before the presidency or during the presidency can be charged in the aftermath. And we've heard a lot of discussions about that. But it also means that there, the gentleman's agreement that has essentially existed for the duration of the presidency in the United States, not just the modern presidency, the entire presidency, <laughs> that presidents after uh, their tenure in office are not to be charged or should be pardoned preemptively, that that has gone out the window. So what it does mean, however, is that there is now an understanding that essentially the rest of the world already had, which is that presidents are not above the law. It also means that the state of the post-presidency has been reinvented, because it means that presidents can be charged for criminal activities. They can be indicted. So we have a first case here. It certainly doesn't mean that it'll be the last. Rachel, Trump's campaign is now actually fundraising off the indictment. How is he leaning into this politically, and could this all work in his favor? Oh, look, the Trump campaign is looking at these legal hurdles and they're looking to turn them into a political opportunity ahead of 2024. They are fundraising off of this. They did so just minutes after a news of this indictment came down. Not only that, I got to tell you, I was down in Waco, Texas with the former president for his first major rally of the 2024 presidential campaign cycle, and he spent most of the time focused on this, focused on the legal challenges that is ahead of him, casting it all as a witch hunt, as illegitimate, going after the Manhattan DA. He is leaning into this heavily. And I also had an opportunity to talk to many of his supporters who were there. And I asked them, would you still support the former president if he were to be indicted, they said that they would, that they were not concerned about that. The big challenge for Trump now is whether or not this actually expands the base. Sure, there are people in his corner that may have always been in his corner, right? But does news of this indictment bring any new uh, Republicans and independents into his base ahead of 2024, Diane? And Aaron, how's law enforcement preparing for this arrest? There's already more security officers here outside court. The courthouse, ever since Trump tweeted calling for protest a couple of Saturdays ago, has been ringed in these metal barricades. But today, the U.S. Secret Service, the NYPD, the court officers, and the U.S. Marshal Service are all going to uh, meet uh, and figure out how to arrange this surrender of former President Trump early next week. They're also going to do a walkthrough of the building behind me, particularly the 15th floor. That's the courtroom where tr Trump will enter his not guilty plea. All right, Aaron Katursky, Rachel Scott, Catherine Falders, Leah Wright, Rigur, thank you all. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.